You're watching Unrendered on IKTV. I'm Tony Regisford chatting with Dr. Roslyn Ambrose, the chairperson of the National Accreditation Board, and Mrs. Nicole Barnaby Baker. She is the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education. Of course, we're talking about um, the issue of the accreditation and recognition of the associate degree programs and the accreditation of the Simmons and Grantians Community College on a whole. Um, when we went out, mm -hmm. P.S., you were about to say something else on the issue of you seeking clarification and the acquisition that you, you really were scrambling. You, you, you didn't know what you were doing, mm -hmm. and so you had to run to Professor Corbley um, mm -hmm. to get clarification. So I allow you to, uh, to continue. Right. Now, the normal procedure, which I thought that particular person would have followed any order Vincentia would have followed, if you want information on something that relates to education, I would have thought they would have come to the Ministry of Education and seek the information. But instead of doing that, a pronouncement was made, which was erroneous because I knew, because of the, my involvement with UWI, false allegations. So because the pronouncements were made and put out there, I've already gone through that. So okay, you didn't come to the Ministry of Education, but I am saying there are other people in the society here in St. Vincent that that particular person could have asked for the information. People who I know are familiar with the regulations just as much as I am. Mm -hmm. And there is one gentleman, I won't say who he is by name, but he was a role model to me when I was a member of the Rotary Club of Kingstown. Yes. The Rotary Club is a junior arm of the Rotary Club of St. Vincent. And that particular gentleman is closely affiliated with the UWI and when I go to the UWI meetings he sits right where Rosalind is sitting. I am here, the esteemed gentleman, my former role model and I stress former because I have not heard him come out and speak publicly or write about this issue and I told someone I, my heart was a bit broken, a piece was chipped off because as a young person I looked up to that person and that person could have easily have told the person making the pronouncements, don't go and make a spectacle of yourself in the public. You're going to be ridiculed because what you are saying or you're about to say is wrong. But what I want to assume is the person who made the pronouncements, I have to assume, did not ask the esteemed gentleman of whom I speak, can you give me some you clarification? Know, normally, on rendered, we, we, um <laughs> you know, we don't go about the, the Marbury Bush like that. We, we actually name people once we're not slandering them, once we're not, um, you know, we're not mm -hmm. damaging or defaming mm -hmm. them. And, and, and it, it might be an idea to, are you, are you, I'm going to be, to be brave enough. Are you talking about the past um, open campus? Um, no. No, you're not talking about no. that. So, so I'm talking about someone, someone who currently sits form. at UWI yeah. meetings with me since 2010. So, so why, why can't we call him him? It's, it's not well, he's a Rotarian. I leave it at that. And he's my role model I had as a young person mm -hmm. when I was in the Rotary Club of Kingston. And he writes in the local newspapers. And he is closely affiliated with the UWI as in a lecturer current. So I leave it at We're that. We're talking about Dr. Jules Ferlin, and I think I've solved the mystery. Is that is that the person you're talking well, about? If, if, if you are connecting the dots, but... But, but this is unrendered, and I, I really like to... Well, um, more or less, and, yes. and it's someone who I'm well acquainted with, and yes. someone who I, I really admire, yes. or admired. I don't know which one to say at this moment. So I'm going to ask Dr. Jules Ferlin, because he's promised to come on this program in any event, mm -hmm. not to address the community college mm -hmm. issue necessarily, but you've given me some points to, to bring up with him. Mm -hmm. So... Basically, let's go back, let's roll back. Basically, you are saying that Corbley should have cleared the air. Mm -hmm. And in fact, did for some people. Mm -hmm. I think, Dr. Ambrose, you're saying that it may be disrespectful to not take what Corbley had to say, being the person responsible for undergraduate admissions to of the course, University of course, he's the ultimate authority. Mm. Most appropriate person to speak to that issue, and he did. And I think it's very irresponsible for anyone who is of so little knowledge, it's now mm -hmm. obvious, to counter what he is saying. Mm -hmm. 
and is stirring up the young people to feel that they're wasting their time, that their certificates are worthless. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't like that if I'm an 18 year old and I have this certificate. I had an associate's degree when I was 18 years old and I was proud of it because the difference between having an associate's degree and just a collection of A-level subjects is an associate's degree makes you job ready. That was the intent when it was designed years and years ago in North America. It was to make you job ready, give you a skill basis. The person who qualifies with an associate's degree in paralegal studies, that person is trained to be an administrative person in a law practice. That is not a jumping off point for law school because these are two very different things. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, and people Major should Scott understand that. that and, 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 people should understand. and I think yeah. it's really a, such a misguided notion to tell students that they should get what um, time off. Universities don't give time off. Let's get a grip. Universities are places where people go to work and study and do research. You may get advanced placement. That is not, quote, time off. Now, there is a challenge meted yeah. out to the community college or the administrators. And, and I don't know if this would be addressing, certainly not, maybe not you, Dr. Ambrose, but the PS in education. The opposition, um, championed by the leader, um, is daring the college to publish the names of people who would have received or who received advanced placement or credits by virtue of having the appropriate associate degree. Now that may not be a challenge that, um, I don't know, I can't speak for you, um, but you may, may want to take up. But how, how, how are you likely to respond to that? Well, I am not the director or deputy director of the community college, but if, let's say that the college was directly under the portfolio of the PS education as it, as it was prior to 2005, my initial response would be, the Ministry of Education does not conduct this business in the national newspapers of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I have said before, a short while ago, if there is a question on education or an education-related matter, come to the Ministry of Education. All my principals and head teachers, anyone who works with me knows, knows that I have an open-door policy. But you don't go and make public pronouncements in the media, first of all, which are erroneous, which are false. And then you continue to, you make requests in the national newspapers. So, P.S., can you say unequivocally, mm -hmm. we're not going to call names here, mm -hmm. right? But I want, to, I want to hear it from you. Yes. Can you say without a shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. that there are a number of people who pursued the associate degree yes. programs? have in fact not just matriculated mm -hmm. to programs at the University of the West Indies we're talking about. Now I'm sure there are other universities and colleges UTEC, that... Jamaica. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you say, without a shadow of a doubt, that you know of many persons who have received credits to programs mm -hmm. and in some cases advanced placement? Okay. The the only yes, students, before you answer that, yes. yes. It seems like it's almost every weekend you open a newspaper, yes. there's some happy, smiling young person with wearing a waterboard and posing in her graduation mm -hmm. gear that says, oh, I qualified from, I went to the girls' high school or mm -hmm. whatever, and then to the community college, and I now have a bachelor's and master's. What more do you want? Yeah, but, but this, this might be her or him getting there on their own steam. The point I'm trying to bring out mm -hmm. is the associate degree programs, yes. have they gained a student, not just matriculation, because mm -hmm. I think you've cleared that up, Yes. right? But Credits, meaning that if yes. Sure. Yes. It, sure. they don't have to resit certain yes. courses, yes. right? Yes. yes. Or advanced placement, meaning mm -hmm. that they would spend less time yes. on the degree. Yes. Can you say without a shadow of a doubt that there are students who pursue the yes. associate degree? And let me tell yes. you my source, because mm -hmm. I do not make uninformed statements in this country. I want to just say before I answer you, mm -hmm. if it's one message, I think that some people have been promoting for the past two and a half to three weeks about the PS education. Their intention might have been to discredit my name they, when they say that I didn't know and I asked the university, but the message they have in effect been putting out there is a message I wish to make here, send here myself. Mm -hmm. The permanent secretary, and I'm looking at the camera, if Feel you permit free. me, you said I must look at you. Feel free. I'm look at, saying look that at the camera. <laughs> the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Nicole Bonnady Baker, 
neither has nor desires the luxury of making uninformed, erroneous statements in this country. I will always speak to the authoritative source of information, even when I know, and I will, uh, if you will permit me later in the program, I will tell you why I have adopted this approach and why I chose to come on this program at this time. So I just needed to say that it's not my interest to make uninformed statements in this country. Now, I can speak to the students who have accessed the student loan program. Right, because that comes with the Ministry yes, of Education. Yes, because I mm -hmm. have not done any tracer study. Mm -hmm. I haven't gone to the college and asked the college to give me a list of graduates right. and then seek from UWI which ones from the associate degrees matriculated and got exemptions. Right. That's not my business. That's the college's business. Mm -hmm. If someone who wants the information goes in there, and it's the college's business too, for them to see how their students have progressed. It's not... They so have they're a the ones who are doing the tracing. They are doing the tracing. They, but, but, but from the information that comes to you with the student loan. sit mm -hmm. on the National Student Loan Committee, mm -hmm. we have even this year had students who completed associate degrees and accessed the student loan program so they could go off to St. Augustine and Cave Hill and Mona to do two years only of the three-year degree. Of a normal three-year degree. Which is program. what I'm saying to you, the students who do the first year at the open campus are going in the same time for two final years as students who have done the associate's degree from the college. They're also going in for two remaining years. The recognition is in place. I assure you, the UWI has been factual and upright and honest in their Professor Cobley's letter. And yes, I can speak from those students who have access to student loan. I don't know about the others, only those that have come through our student loan program. And of course, you know, not every student who applies and qualifies, we can send off on the student loan program. But I can say that with certainty. In your mind, as you say that you are privy to the people who access the student loan to um, go off to the University of the West Indies, I think is what we're talking about yes. here. Um, that clearly is a sampling of maybe yes. Yes. Uh, a, a larger pool of people. Yes. Right. Are you satisfied with the sampling that you see for the people accessing student loans? Mm -hmm. That in fact, the advanced placement and exemptions mm -hmm. um, from certain courses mm -hmm. um, is in fact attributable to the recognition that is given to the associate degree programs at the college? Now that question, I would not be able to answer and I'll tell you why. The economically disadvantaged program, the criteria is the socioeconomic standing mm -hmm. of the students who apply and there are set criteria. This program has been introduced since 2003. Yes. So there is nothing in that criteria which says, give some to associate degree holders, no, no, that give was some not to my question. levels. Yes, you were talking about- no, my, my question yes. basically was saying mm -hmm. that you know from the people who, some of the people who have oh, okay. been granted loans. Yes, yes, yes. That they're actually going off, not for the full three years. Two years. But for two years in some two instances. Two years, and, and in, in some, some cases, instances, two years and one or two courses. Right, and some right. exemptions. Right. Right. There are 10 modules, yes. I believe, Wait. and they would go in, some would go in with eight modules off, right. some would go to 10 modules off. Right, so yes. you're satisfied, therefore, yes. that that sample data, it's just a sample because yes. you're not seeing everybody because not everybody's yes. accessing the student loans, exactly. right? Exactly. So from that sample data that you have, you are satisfied? Are you satisfied that yes. the associate degree program is yes. gaining the requisite recognition? Yes, yeah, and I'll tell you why. We also, because these students are economically disadvantaged, what we have done sometimes, because we can only send a certain number every year, we have been telling some of the students who are in really dire circumstances financially, do the associate's degree, which is cheaper, and we actually fund through the National Economic Disadvantaged Student Loan mm -hmm. Program, them doing the associate's degree, and then we fund their balance of two years when they go off. Oh, so you actually so pay this, for the local yes, leg as yes, well? Yes, 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 yes. Dr. Amrish, you, you see, you, Tony, what, what, what yeah. we must try to understand is that, and somehow this has come that as long as you got this little piece of paper, that's your free pass. It is not. From an admissions committee point of view, if you, the degree says um, you need 2.5, that's a minimum. Mm -hmm. Certainly, because things are so competitive, there are other people who are applying and their pass rate, and this is where you need to submit your transcripts. It's not just on the basis that you've got your name printed on a certificate. Mm -hmm. When you submit your transcripts and you've got a 
here's a kid with 3.8, 3.0, and you've got 2.5. Certainly, those people are ahead of you with your certificate, and your 2.5, and the 3.5 person has gone ahead of mm -hmm. you. That's the real world. Mm -hmm. There are places, I know universities in North America, where the, the, the positions are so competitive that they have up to 2,000, 3,000 people applying for 110 places in dental school, in medical school. That's what happens. Mm. So when you're competing and if this person who is so disgruntled with her associate's degree in whatever studies that was and feels that everybody is against her and the paper is no good and all these crazy things that are just really so wild and vexatious. Right. That is not the way we want you to go about it. You need to find something that you can do, some way that you can fix it and stop having this attitude like I've heard a number of students say, we just want to pass. Well, that's what happens if you mm -hmm. take the just one pass. You get the bare minimum, and then you have to battle from the bottom. That's not good enough. Right. Now, I, I mean, I think the same thing obtains even when you become a, a graduate. So you do your undergraduate, your, your, your degree, your first degree, and you may want to go on to a master's program. And you then enter that competitive phase again. Um, you may not get on to that that's particular the way of cohort the because mm -hmm. um, it's full, and of it's course, full of people yes. with better... Um, GPAs than, than mm -hmm. you had from your first degree. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want to try to tap into what may be the gray areas because if it is at all possible after this program is aired that there's far more clarification um, on, on, on some of these issues that I hear. Now, the leader of the opposition keeps saying that you know, yes, but you're telling half-truths, really. They, 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 all is not really well. Come clean, I think I heard him say. Come be honest with the students. Be honest with the young people in Simmons and the Grandines. And I'm going to ask you here, as we take this third segment out, from the Ministry of Education's perspective, mm -hmm. have you been squeaky clean in what you communicate to the students at the people pursuing, and we're dealing with the associate degree program, mm -hmm. programs. Have you been squeaky clean in communicating what you need to communicate? I know you're not the college. Right. Right? And, and so mm -hmm. part of that you cannot address. But I'm just going to leave that question hanging mm -hmm. there. And when we come back mm -hmm. to the final segment, mm -hmm. we'll pick it up from there. Right. Mm -hmm. This is Unrendered on IKTV. More with my guests when we come back. Mm -hmm.